We'll be using HDL Verifier to generate a DPI component for this controller block. As you can see, it only has one output. But the verification team wants a couple of its internal signals accessible from their system Verilog test bench for debugging. Now, I could create extra ports on the controller block and bring those signals up through the hierarchy to connect to the test bench, but that's extra work for both me and the verification team. And if I edit the Simulink model after it's been verified, that can be risky. Test point insertion lets you specify what signal or signals can be accessed during simulation without changing the structure or behavior of the Simulink model. So let's say we want to monitor the output of this game. So we would right click on the signal, bring up its properties, select test point, and we want to give it a name so we know what we're looking at during simulation. And we can traverse down into sub hierarchies and add test points there as well. Now we'll set up code generation to generate a DPI component for the controller block. So this setting tells code generation that we're trying to build a DPI component. And we want to make sure that generate code only is not checked for our case since we want to build the DPI component right here on this machine. And then we will need to turn on the C API for our signals. And in this case, we're going to generate a test bench since I don't happen to have one for this design. Typically, you would be exporting this to an existing test bench environment, so you don't need to generate a test bench unless you just want an example of how to use the DPI calls. And you can customize the DPI function generation for the test points, either have one function per test point or have them all accessed via one function call. And this will depend on how you're using them. If you're accessing them all at the same time, then it's more efficient to combine them into one function so you don't have multiple calls into the DPI component. But if you only need access to individual signals at given times, then it's more efficient to just access one signal from one DPI function when it's needed. So just make sure you don't leave this on none or you won't get anything. So we will generate one function per test point. And now we're ready to build our component. Here we are in our simulator, and this is the generated system Verilog wrapper, which has the DPI component declarations, as well as the accesses to the component down here. And remember, I set it to use a different function for each test point, so there are two function calls for the two test points. And HDL Verifier also generated C and header files uh, for the DPI component and for its wrapper, it generated a make file which went and automatically built the object file and the shared library to load into our simulator. And since I generated a test bench, it will also generate run scripts for Cadence Incisive, Synopsys VCS, and Mentor Questasim, which is what I will use here. And here you can see the outputs for the test points that we created.